Thank you for having us. Um, from you know the what used to be the epicenter, but it's shifting uh, the coronavirus. We we thought we're going to just kick it off with some reflections on um, maybe our own perspective on on how things um, developed in the last six to seven weeks. Um, some implications for we political scientists after all for politics, but. Um, Italian politics, but perhaps uh, more significantly European politics, but then very quickly uh, open up to, to everyone there. There's so many of you, maybe you have questions. And so we want to do this really quite informal. We have two slides that we may wheel in at some point. Uh, well, um, let me just say greetings to everyone. Um, it's a delight to, to be here. We didn't expect uh, 60 people plus to, to come along. It's super that there's so much interest in, in Europe. And we just happened, as Lisbeth was mentioning, to land up in Florence, um, near the, uh, the European epicenter. And for a while there, Italy was really leading the way in the worst, in the worst way, in terms of the coronavirus and the, and the incidents. And so please, um, if you would like to raise uh, questions, you have comments, um, don't hesitate to, um, to engage in the chat. Um, and we can make this kind of a little bit of an interactive um, event. And so perhaps we'll, how would you like to begin? We'll, we'll kind of chat and we'll talk perhaps about the events in Italy and our experience in, in Florence, which really begins in the, um, really in the third week of, uh, of February, wasn't it? The yeah, I mean, so February. just a, a quick recap. I think most of you know mm -hmm. the, the basic facts here, but the first uh, case, was uh, identified in uh, northern Italy, the province of Lodi, just north of Milan, on February 20th. And this was a Unilever em employee, quite a high-end employee, one of these uh, super spreaders, as they later became called. So highly active person who'd been feeling pretty unwell for some time, but uh, thought it was just one of these flu things that just kept lingering, and then found himself at some point in a hospital and finally got checked quite late in the game and it turned out to be coronavirus. So that was, I think if I got that right, February 20th. And um, as soon as that uh, was identified, they quickly realized they had a problem on their hands, but they first thought it was quite local. As of the 23rd of February, the area around, so Lodi, and then the area around it was uh, put under quarantine uh, in a, what it was called a red zone, highly constrained uh, movement there. But uh, very quickly, it, it, it appeared that there were several uh, places um, where um, the virus was taking off, uh, particularly in Lombardy, which is, as you know, the powerhouse of Italy, 10 million people, and really the engine of uh, uh, both the, uh, the manufacturing, but also the service sector and uh, essentially the Italian economy. Uh, so the next step was um, to declare a, a red zone, um, pretty severe, but with exceptions, lockdown for much of northern Italy, including Lombardy, but also Venice, the Veneto region, Venice is the capital there, um, where there also were pockets of, of infection. And then as of uh, March 8th, it, it's the, a, a more general lockdown was not, not quite a lockdown yet, but a, a quite significant constraint, constraining of movement was imposed on the whole of Italy. Um, that actually was a, a, a semi-disaster in the sense that uh, the news of that lockdown was leaked and um, the, um, as, Many people left, several ten thousands of people left northern Italy uh, to go back to the south. As we know, there's a long standing uh, pattern of migration of southern Italians go to, go to the north to, to, to take up jobs there. And so the, 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 the real fear was then that the whole of Italy, the south of Italy, would also be infected. And um, that lockdown, March 8, was then significantly enhanced as of, what was it, March 20? Two, I think, where it is Chiusa Italia, it is called, uh, with far stricter measures. That actually means that we, we just are inside a home. You know, we can't go for walks or exercise or anything like it. The only thing you can do is essential services like 
going shopping. Yes. And, uh, you know, one of the things that one saw very early on was the discrepancies, the disagreements about how to deal with this tension between the cost of economic closure of, uh, of lockdown and the desperate need to try to stem the, uh, the incidence, the transmission um, of the virus. And so um, already by February uh, 29, at the end of, um, of February, um, when it seemed that the virus was really going to be spreading, um, the mayor of uh, Milan um, had this press conference where he said, Milan doesn't stop. I was inviting people to go to bars and to uh, restaurants. And so there was this tension, this regional tension, the tension of simple uh, kind of ignorance or, or disagreements about how to deal with the situation that led to really a cacophony of different uh, messages, which gradually kind of fused and slowed down. Um, and then there was a kind of an agreement, but I very much sense now that there is um, growing disagreement. There have been some demonstrations in the United States, also in, uh, in, in Italy, uh, of people who have been locked back in their homes, isolated, losing their jobs, in un, um, anticipated close connections with their families, which could be fun for a few days, but uh, could be wearing uh, very soon uh, afterwards. It's, um, there's, I think there is a, a difference with the United States where uh, a lot of this has been seen through the partisan prism, you know, Democrat or Republican. And here, it's a lot more a chaotic picture. I mean, it's the irony of ironies that the area that was uh, hit most severely uh, was the North, um, the rich North, but also the North that where the two big uh, provinces are most heavily hit, uh, Lombardy and Veneto, are in the hands of, of the Lega Nord. The, the, the party that otherwise would have taken a kind of a more hard Republican Trumpian line was likely to take that, right? And so here were two governors um, put in a position to having to decide whether they were, whether they were gonna give priority to economic, economics, business as usual, or priority to the public health and many of their supporters, of course, being, being hit by this. They took actually quite different approaches. The uh, governor of Veneto, Zaya, was very aggressive in, in very, um, very in, in intensive testing early on and, and wanted to, to really focus on public health, while the governor of Lombardy, also the same party, um, was, was much more, as Gary also mentioned, much more kind of um, equivocal of this. And by the way, the, 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 the mayor of Milan, who said, um, you know, Milan doesn't Milan stop. Was, was a member of the Social Democratic Party. Yeah. So that isn't that partisan? You, you get a territorial set of differences. You get people arguing on the balance of trade off between the economy and health. Um, but the government here is actually very popular. And Conti now has, in public opinion polls, around 70% support. Now, the brothers of Italy, the one thing that you can see in terms of partisanship is that the brothers of Italy, which is a which is to the right of, uh, of the Lega, has increased support. It now has 13% in a public opinion poll a couple of days ago, which almost brings it to the level of the five, five star movement, which is at 14%. So there's that. Um, but actually, um, the United States is unusual in that there has not been this swarm of support for the national government in the United States, as there has been in right across Europe where there has been this kind of solidarity. So there might be something specific about the, uh, about the Trump administration um, that has led it not to have this bonus support in a national emergency. Yeah. Um, shall we quickly show those slides? Yeah, let's do let's that. Let's actually show the slides very quickly and then maybe we can say a couple of things about, well, one or two things about you. I open it up because I see there's a number of questions. This is, um, I mean, like you also have in the New York Times, uh, this comes from La Repubblica, one of the two main uh, newspapers in, in Italy. And so daily, in fact, at 6 p.m. at this point, while we're talking, they update the figures. But this is essentially a, a, 
gives you a sense of the decline in growth. This is so-called, this is something that comes close to, it's not quite the same as the famous R. It does there. reflect the R. So we've it only does. just got, if you look at it closely, right now the daily increase in the incidence <laughs> Um, of the virus is approaching zero. It's a little bit above, it's really between one and 2%, but it is very stable now. And so you can say that we've almost reached the, 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 um, the golden moment when R is a zero or less than, uh, less than zero. And so we are uh, at a very stable um, point. When you, when you average, when you take the mean right across um, Italy, there are big regional variations that we're going to show you. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next one. And these are the only two that we're gonna show. This is essentially showing you the, the, the seriousness of the, of the uh, contagion by province. So these little things are provinces. So red are... means high, um, high incidence and white means uh, negligible incidence of the Some, of COVID-19. Somehow on this, I see less of the variation than what you see on the bigger screen, but okay, we'll just have to do it. You just have to take our word for it. You see the very dark, dark reds in the north, it's essentially something slightly lighter red towards the right. Uh, in the north is Venice, right? But the, the key worry was that the, the crisis which overwhelmed the health system in the north, we know, uh, would spread to the south where the, the health system is far weaker um, than in the north. And as you can see, it has, but actually to a much lesser extent. And, and I'm sorry that actually the shades don't quite come out as strongly as they do in the original, uh, that's just how it is. But so uh, you see that uh, Napoli, Naples, uh, which is, um, a little bit above the foot there is is and, and those areas in a much lighter color so that is um from an italian perspective a success story by the way it's interesting that conte the prime minister um who's by uh, he's a member of of uh, cinque stelle so the the five star movement is um is from the south hails from the south um he's actually the first uh, prime minister from the south since I believe the last one was 1989 and that one only lasted a year or so. And so he is the one who is mostly, at this point at least, politically benefiting in the sense that his personal rating is now over 70%. Just along, you know, along the lines of Angela Merkel and, and Boris Johnson. The darker the red, the greater the incidence and the lower the daily increase. So the daily increase is, is greater in the, in the south in those lighter colored areas than in um, than in the north. But one of the things that's come out in Italy is that we have more information about smaller provinces than larger provinces. Um, essentially, with dealing with the coronavirus, I think it's fair to say that small is, um, is, is beautiful. Um, and the information that we have from these small provinces or small, um, like, um, like Bergamo, is that we really um, lack information both about the death rate and about the incidence of the of the virus, and it's less. It's well known that the incidence is many times greater, five to ten times greater than the formal tested um, incidence. But uh, it's there's there's a great um, underestimation of the death rate in Bergamo. Um, Two thousand and sixty people had died as of yesterday uh, when we checked, but a detailed survey revealed that the real number is closer to 4,500 or 5,000, which would be an underestimation of two to one or two and a half to one. So there the idea is that in that, in that uh, one province, which was very um, intensely hit, that um, the number of people who've actually died is uh, twice as much, at least, as the official death rate due to the, the coronavirus. So what, what I mean, for those of you who have checked the Economist of this week will have seen it. There is an interesting article there that, that uh, shows um, some figures of one way to, to get a, grap a, grip, a, a grip on how severe this crisis is, in terms of deaths at least, is to compare the incidence of deaths, mortality, mortality this year with that uh, similar period, last year or over a, a range of years. Uh, La Repubblica came out uh, today with a number that for the whole of Italy 
there's an increase of deaths in the month, month of March, 20% um, higher than a comparable months um, over the past five years, the average over the past five years, 20%. But if you were to go to a, a place like Bergamo, uh, one of the worst hit, not the most hit, but one of the worst, uh, you're talking about a, a, a four times as many deaths compared to um, the past years. So that's, that's the kind of, probably, I mean, I think I would also say, <laughs> there's now this debate about whether China has been uh, covering up, but you know, the problem of accurate data is, is very general, right? It's, it's every country struggles with what you count um, in terms of a, a death due to coronavirus. How do you count the number of deaths? Yeah. And then particularly, what's the incidence of contagion? You know, the mortality rate in Italy, I mean, the formal mortality rate is very high. It is 12.9%, 12.9%. And the average age of those that have died, for women, it's 80 years, and for men, it's uh, 75 years. But, you know, that's a, there, there are biases on, on both sides. The number of people has, that have died is, is, is greater than reported. And the number of those people who have incidents, who where the disease has been transmitted is vastly higher. And so those figures have to be kind of taken with a grain of salt. But our sense is that it's much greater than 1%. The mortality rate in terms of the uh, incidence is greater than, uh, is, is greater than uh, 1%. And when they actually went into Bergamo and said, well, they, did a, they could really figure out because there was such general testing in that uh, small area, 26% uh, um, have had or have um, the virus uh, currently. So that's much larger than, the, uh, than the, the official figures, that is people who formerly had testing in other areas only when they're seriously ill or when they enter a hospital for one reason or another. 